Items. Anything from food to weapons. In this video I will show you how to create custom items and explain what is a prefab, what is a component, and what components you need to know about when creating items. In my previous video, Understanding Your Environment, go watch it, I showed you two programs for creating animations and textures. Text tools and... I already did that joke. It's Spriter. We're gonna use Spriter. If you have them downloaded, yeah. that's good. If you don't, I'm gonna leave links in the description. Code for items, or any entity for that matter, is always placed inside scripts slash prefabs. Let's create these folders. Inside create a new text file and call it something funny. Of course the extension needs to be that Lua, since we're writing a Lua source code file. If you don't see file extensions, enable it by clicking here, here, and here. Open the file and write return prefab. Now, what is this prefab thing? Every prefab file needs to return a prefab object at the end. A prefab is, to put it simply, a blueprint for the game to create an entity from. Here's the prefab object. Pretty simple, as you can see, it takes five parameters. We don't count self as it's a hidden parameter. Starting from the left, we've got name, which is self explanatory. Fn, which is a function, kind of like a constructor for an entity. Assets, which is a table of assets our entity uses. Depths, which is a table of other prefab names that our entity might use. And force path search, which is a boolean value for when you want to force search the path to asset files, which is skipped when playing on consoles. Below you can see there is also an asset object, which is usually used alongside prefabs. Here we only have three parameters, type, file and param. Nothing too crazy. Alright, let's get back to our prefab file. Now you know the first parameter is the name. Let's add the constructor function as the second parameter. Write a local function and name it whatever you like. Uh, this function will take no parameters. As this is the constructor function, it needs to first and foremost create our entity. There is this create entity function that we'll use. It returns an entity script object, which is basically our entity. Let's save it as a local inst. Short for instance. Our constructor needs to return this entity, so below write a return inst. And, for as bare bones as it is, this is all you need to have a custom prefab in the game. If you wanted to test your item right now, you'd need to also add this little table to your mod main. Just so the game knows, it should load your prefab. You can now spawn this entity in-game using cspawn in the console. You won't really know if it's there since we didn't add the anim state, but trust me, it's there. So, we want to see our item. Not a problem. Back in our prefab file, write add transform and add anim state. Now, normally I would show you the inner workings of these two functions while explaining what the hell is actually happening on the screen. However, these functions are not visible to us, the peasants. Why, you may ask? The stuff together's code that's visible to us is written in Lua that you already knew. However, the engine the game runs on is a custom engine written by Clay in C++, and this engine is not visible to us. Again, peasants. Unfortunately, that means that there are some functions slash methods that we simply cannot study. What we can do, however, is book a ticket to Vancouver, go to Clay's offices, and steal the source code speculate. We, we can just speculate. In this case, add transform allows our entity to exist in the world, have a position, scale, etc. And the add anim state gives our entity a physical appearance. Cool. Next, add add network, which manages networking since this is a multiplayer game after all. Below that, we'll write inst anim state set bank, inst anim state set build, and inst anim state play animation. This is how we tell the game what our entity looks like. And the bank means what set of animations we're using. The build means what textures we're using, and play animation just plays the animation when our entity is created. We'll create some custom textures later in this video, but for now let's just use the rocks assets. Write rocks for bank and build, and write F1 for the animation. Don't ask me why, I don't know, I'm not quite. Remember when we were talking about the assets table? Well, we need to add the rocks animation archive to it, so our pipa will be able to use it. At the very top of the file, create a local assets table and add an asset for animation. This is the asset class from before, this is the type of asset we're using, and this is the file path to set asset. 
back to the bottom, add this asset stable as the third parameter to our return prefab. Now we're able to actually see the item when we spawn it. Good job, gold star for you. So, what now? Components, we need to add some components of course. What is a component? A component is a set of variables and functions that are meant to manage a single property of an entity. Instead of writing 500 lines of code to make an item, let's say, edible inside the prefab file, we move everything related to eating to a component. Not only does this reduce the size of our prefab file, but it also allows us to use that component for any prefab way, eliminating the need to repeatedly write the same code over and over again. And as a bonus, it also makes editing easier since you only need to edit one component file and not 50 prefab files that happen to use it. I'm not gonna show you how to create a custom component in this video, but I will tell you about the ones that are worth mentioning, especially for creating items. Let's start off with Inspectable, a relatively small component that allows players to describe the item and, if you're feeling fancy, you can add a get status function to make players say different quotes based on specific conditions. Inventory item is a bit more complicated, not only because it's 5 times the size of Inspectable, but also because of the replica. Here starts the networking hell. A lot of the most commonly used components have a replica located in a separate file named whatever the component name is underscore replica. These replicas are how the client and the server communicate with each other. There's a lot to talk about networking and different aspects of it, like replicas and netvars and RPCs, and I could not possibly cover all of it in this video. So, better move on to something that doesn't make my head spin. Huntable, another relatively simple component, and this one is cool in the sense that you can very easily apply it to any prefab with one singular function. Inside standard components that Lua, starting on line 685, there's a bunch of global functions that add the huntable component. They all used to give different specific reactions to hunting, like setting things on fire or applying work to workable entities, etc. But it's been removed from the game, understandably. The last thing you'd want in your world is a willow main that can burn your entire base from the afterlife. In the same file there are also functions for making entities freezable and ignitable. Keep that in mind. Alright, let's add some of these components to our item. Of course, we'll need to add the inspectable one and the inventory item one. You can do that with add component and simply write the name of the component. You can then access these components with inst.components.component name. However, we're still missing something. Remember when we had this talk earlier about networking hell? Well, these components are meant to be added and managed only on the server side, and slapping them just like that will actually add them on the server and on the client. So we need to do something about it. Thankfully, there is a nifty little object called the world that can help us. The world has a variable called isMasterSim, which basically tells us whether we're running on the server or on the client. So before we add any components, we need to make sure we stop running the function on the client. Go ahead and write. If not the world is master sim, then return inst end. Now our prefab constructor is broken into two sections, the one that runs both on the server and the client, and the one that only runs on the server. Let's see if our item works now. It does, although something feels off. Maybe it's the fact there is no inventory sprite when we pick it up, or maybe it's the weird slide that does when we drop it on the ground. I think we might be missing something. Ah, oh, of course, we need to add the physics to our item. It's another one of these properties that can be easily slapped onto a prefab with a function from standard components. This time it's make inventory physics. Make sure to add it on the server and the client though. What about the inventory sprite? That's fine, normally the game pulls inventory assets automatically, but for modded content we're gonna have to do it manually. And we'll do that later. And floatable by adding the floater component, but using the standard components again. If you're curious about these parameters, the first one is our entity, the second one is the size of the water ripple that shows when the item floats. There's three sizes you can use here, small, med and large, and all of them have a slightly different animation. The third one is the vertical offset of the ripple, the fourth one is the scale of the ripple, the fifth one is the name of the bank you want the item to switch to when it floats, the sixth one does nothing, and the seventh one also does nothing, unless you want to change a specific symbol of the animation I guess. Ok, now we're getting somewhere, it's almost like we have a fully functioning item. All we're missing now is the name and the description quotes. There is this global table called strings. It calls everything from item names to character quotes through UI text. If we wanted to add some quotes, we would need to write all of this. And this wouldn't even be that bad if you were only adding one item, but imagine if we were adding 50 of them. Programmers are lazy, 
and they're supposed to be lazy, taking shortcuts is basically our job, so here's the way I like to do it. Delete all this garbage and create local variables for every character's quotes, as well as the names. Now if you want to add a quote or a name, all we need is just this. Way easier on the eyes. Let's move on to creating inventory assets for the item. I'll be using this fine gentleman as my inventory texture, and you can use anything you want really. Make sure the image size is 64 by 64 pixels, place it inside the newly created images folder and open the game. Normally you'd have the autocompiler autocompile any image into text and XMLs, but if for some reason it doesn't work for you, you can run the compiler manually from the mod tools folder by clicking on the autocompiler.exe. Or if you don't want to use that for some reason, you can use text tools and the text creator. How it works is that you select the images you want to convert to a text file and select the output directory, then click convert. You don't need to worry about these options on the right here, click them as they are. This text file you created can be opened with the text tool, and as you can see, it is converted properly. So, now we have the text file, but what about the XML? We're gonna need to create it ourselves. Inside, we need to write the coordinates for the image we want to use inside the text file. It might look complicated at first, but it's pretty simple actually. To define the section of our image in the text file, we're gonna need to write atlas and then the texture with the file name to our text file. Below, we'll need a table of elements with one element. For that element, we're gonna need to define the name and four points for defining the image area. In this case, we'll need to write the coordinates for the bottom left and the upper right points of the image. U1 stands for the X coordinate for the bottom left point. V1 stands for the Y coordinate. U2 and V2 stand for the X and Y coordinates of the upper right point. To select the entire image, we'll write U1 equals 0, U2 equals 1, V1 equals 0, and V2 equals 1. Now we have these two files that we can use for our item. Inside mod main, write a new assets table to load them into the game. We need to add atlas, the XML file, and the image, the text file. And now inside our prefab constructor under the inventory item component, write and Look at that, we've got ourselves an item. It's that easy. I still have this weird feeling that I'm forgetting something. Oh. Oh no. Creating animations for an item is a bit more complicated than the inventory sprite and could be borderline used as a torturing method because it involves using Spriter. I love Spriter. Alright, let's go into the main folder and create a folder called Exported. Inside we need another folder this time named what our item name is. Inside this folder we need another folder with the same name. And inside this one, we're gonna put our little gentleman right here. Now open this spawn of Satan and create a new project. Select the first folder with the name of your item. This will be the root of our SCML file. You can open the folder in the upper right and drag your image onto the canvas. Position the pivot where you want your item to touch the ground, then right click and overwrite default pivot. In the animations section, double click entity 000 and rename it to your item name. And below, double click new animation and rename it to idle. And that's all. Save the file and make sure it's in the first folder and not the second one. Though I hate this program with every fiber of my being, I will make a more in-depth guide on it somewhere in the future, which I'm not looking forward to, but eh, what can you do? Now the autocompiler will convert this SCML file into a zip archive and create a folder called anim in your mods root folder. This is what we need to load into the game. Add it into the assets table, this time writing anim. Go into the prefab file, change the anim asset here, and change the bank, build, and the animation. Beautiful.
Um, but what if I wanted to create an edible item? Not a problem. All you need is the edible component. What about trading? Tradable component. Usable? Tool and finite uses. You can design plenty of items with just the base game components and even more with custom ones. And that is why in the next video I'll be teaching you how to do just that. Yes, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Leave some feedback in the comments, subscribe if you want to see more, and share this video with your cousin's family while you're at it. See ya!